All right. I've got some floral uh, pattern alphas here I've used for my previous tutorials. Uh, they are free. I've downloaded them from uh, stockgraphicdesigns.com. So there are several different methods uh, to create this kind of metal pattern embossing effect in ZBrush. First method is via insert mesh. In the alpha sub palette, I'm pressing import and bringing in my image. Docking my alpha palette to the side. I'm cranking up my resolution to 600, uh, removing depth and lowering down smoothness to 2. Uh, these settings will be different depending on what type of alpha you're using. Uh, it takes a bit of trial and error to figure out what looks best. Click and make 3D and ZBrush turns the alpha into a 3D mesh. What I'm gonna do next is grab a transpose and squish this whole thing together to tone down the amount of surface noise I have here. Uh, ZBrush created different polygroups for each half of this mesh. I'm just changing the color of uh, one of the polygroup by isolating it and pressing Ctrl W. Subdividing a mesh, uh, running a little bit of polish and then clay polish uh, from the geometry subpalette. Uh, I will quickly create my low poly geometry, duplicating a copy of my goblet mesh and disabling dynamic subdivision. Uh, enabling X symmetry and pressing mirror and weld. You can see uh, I have an issue here where my symmetry plane verts uh, were a bit off. So I'm masking all these verts uh, from the top down view and moving them slightly over. Now when I press mirror and weld uh, the issue is gone. Activate in dynamic subdivision to double check. Uh, there's still a bit of an issue there. I'm gonna run uh, weld points uh, on the geometry sub palette. This is good, but I don't need the other half at this point, uh, so I'll delete it for now. Um, I want my goblet to have overlapping symmetrical EVs, so I'll use the half of the mesh as a placement guide for where I want my details uh, to go. I'm gonna create a couple more floral shapes, uh, same process as before. Appending the second objects to the first one, creating another pattern and appending all of them together. Now in the brush palette I am pressing create insert multi mesh. This creates a new insert multi mesh brush and if I press M on the keyboard I can pick and choose uh, which mesh I'd like to insert. Going back to my low poly mesh and starting to insert my meshes. Just like in Photoshop, I can press and hold spacebar as I'm working with the tool to reposition it quickly. Masking and rotating my object to get a better feel for the placement. Now I'm grabbing the Z Project brush. Uh, Z Project is my friend, uh, changing stroke type to drag rectangle and gently starting to drag it over the parts uh, of the mesh uh, that I want to conform to the goblet shape. Once I have all my patterns flat on the surface, uh, I'm control clicking the outer polygroup and masking the opposite side. Running inflate command, uh, uh, which is available in your deformation sub palette, and a little bit of polish, and you can see uh, we have a basic uh, complex looking pattern thingy. Um, next step is to mirror it over, uh, but I'm getting an error saying that I don't have any polygons. Uh, reason being is when mirroring ZBrush works from left to right, from negative to positive and all my geometry is currently on the wrong side of my x-axis. 
So I'm just gonna rotate it 180 deg degrees and mirror it over. We have some extra bits sticking out, uh, gonna use trim curve to cut them off. There are a couple gaps in my pattern along the symmetry line. Uh, gonna fill them in with my insert brush. It looks stupid in the center, so I'm pressing undo and placing it onto one side of the mesh and then mirroring it over with mirror and weld. Same inflate and polish process for the rest of it. A step up from the project brush is Matchmaker. Same principle as Z-Project, uh, but it maintains the thickness of your projected object. I'm going into my brushes and picking Matchmaker, stroking it over the surface of my pattern and moving it. One thing to keep in mind is that Matchmaker is matching the form of a surface underneath your object, but it won't uh, move your projected shape in place. Z-Project, on the other hand, simply sticks uh, points uh, of an object A onto an object B. Sometimes the result is not 100% perfect, but it's not uh, anything that uh, a move brush and a transpose can't fix. Another method to generate a 3D mesh from alpha is by applying the alpha to a highly subdivided mesh. Uh, in here I have a plane I've sub subdivided several times. I'm assigning my alpha to a transpose tool. Now if I press control and drag my transpose line, you can see I can precisely place uh, the alpha mask where I want. From here you could polygroup your geometry based on your mask, or in my case I'm going into geometry sub palette and running edge loop mask, mask border. Now I will have a clean edge loop uh, around my mask. Now I can either mask the rest of the mesh and run inflate uh, to push the pattern shape out, or we can delete the rest of it and just use the, the pattern mesh with Z project. Same way uh, as I did before when I created insert uh, mesh brushes. When placing a mask with transpose, uh, if you press and hold control and shift, uh, you can add multiple masks. Uh, this is handy when you're creating a more complex detail out of uh, simpler shapes. You can also extrude with transpose tool as opposed to inflating. It will give you a slightly cleaner edge as a result. Uh, just click on your surface and drag the middle circle of your transpose line while holding Ctrl and Shift. You have to make sure that you have uh, parts of your mesh mask though. Uh, here I'm Ctrl Shift transposing the object, but all it does is creates a duplicate. Uh, which I don't want. So I'm gonna add another edge loop around my geometry with uh, group loops uh, in geometry sub palette. I'm masking my new edge loop around the mesh and extruding the main geometry out. Polish by features to smooth the border and polish uh, to smooth, smooth out the entire thing a bit. Now I've created a duplicate of my goblet mesh and I'm applying those techniques uh, I just uh, showed you uh, to masked out the pattern. Now here's the funny part. The only reason I'm showing you this th uh, 3D mesh from Alpha techniques is just to show you the technique. So you know that these tools are available to you if you need them. If I wasn't recording this tutorial and just had to make a game asset with all these uh, details, uh, I would not waste my time doing it in ZBrush. Just think about it. What's the point of using 2D alphas to create 3D meshes in a sculpting app only so I can bake down these meshes back into a 2D map? Wouldn't it be much easier to just do it uh, during the texturing stage? Uh, yeah, it definitely would. The moral of the story, guys, 
is that you always have to keep in mind uh, your final medium. What is the purpose of your model? If you're only making a high resolution sculpt to showcase that you know how to sculpt and use ZBrush, yeah, go crazy in ZBrush. If your final goal is to have an asset that you want to put in a game or your animation, there's no need to slam all your details into the sculpt. I was getting all sorts of memory issues and slow bake times uh, just because my geometry details were way too high poly and I had a simple asset. You can run in all sorts of technical issues and corrupt save files if you don't take your time and plan things out uh, just a little bit in advance. Uh, here I decided to keep it uh, a bit simple and using just one alpha to create the pattern. I'm cutting off those parts of a goblet that I don't need uh, to save the poly count. Adding a couple of trims around the pattern. I decided to add some gems to the top part, inserting some cylinders with the radial symmetry on. Splitting the rest of the goblet off uh, so I can have my cylinders as a separate subtool. Beveling some edges. Using Clip Curve with Polygroups modifier on uh, to enable it, press and hold the uh, space and control while um, Clip Curve brush is selected. Duplicating my gemstones uh, and reusing them at the bottom. And this concludes uh, this part of the tutorial. Uh, we created a high poly mesh that can be used to bake down details uh, on our game asset. And I'll see you guys in the next video.